Welcome back to Continuum Meditations Discusses. So a few things have happened since the last time I did a video. Uh, number one, we've had a few trailers drop for some TV shows, or upcoming TV shows and one upcoming movie later on this year. And I want to talk about my thoughts relating to all three of those particular instances of these particular things. The first one is related to the new science fiction parody comedy, Galaxy Quest. I'm referring to the new show created by Seth MacFarlane, who is, which is coming out later this year on Fox, called The Orville. The second topic that I want to discuss after that is Star Trek Discovery, the new Star Trek science fiction program that is coming out later on, I guess maybe this fall with CBS All Access. And the third thing that I want to talk about after that is going to be the new trailer for Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, let's get into uh, talking about the Orville. Now, as I said before, the Orville apparently uh, is a creation of Seth MacFarlane. I understand from what I've uh, found since watching the trailer for the Orville that Seth MacFarlane is a huge Star Trek fan and he is someone who wants to pay homage to Star Trek by doing this parody of the Star Trek franchise in the Orville incarnation. Now, as I said also before, the Orville itself apparently, from what I've heard, uh, is, is somewhat of a take on the old Galaxy Quest uh, parody itself, which itself was a parody of Star Trek many years ago back in the 1990s. I have to say that I immensely enjoyed Galaxy Quest when it first came out, and it is one of my favorite movies even to this day. So, uh, with that being said, I am looking forward to previewing the Orville and um, maybe sticking around with it if it is in fact a very funny and humorous show. I understand that there are a few people who are involved in the Orville production. Uh, Jonathan Frakes, for example. Robert Duncan McNeil, whom you will also recognize as Lieutenant Tom Paris from Star Trek Voyager fame, uh, and a few other directors and writers who have joined on to make this sh new upcoming show a success. So, with that, uh, The Orville does sound like it's going to be a very interesting show. I'm looking forward to watching it, and I think that it should be interesting to see maybe perhaps a comparison between that and what is going to be upcoming with this new Star Trek Discovery TV series that is set to premiere later this fall. At least that's the latest news that I've heard. So that being said, let's get to some of the comparisons and contrasts between the Orville and Star Trek Discovery. Now, as I said before in my Star Trek Axanar videos, I believe people should boycott Star Trek Discovery. I have not changed my mind on that, and I have not changed my mind on the fact that I do not intend myself personally to watch the new Discovery series. Now, you are free, of course, to disagree with that opinion, and you are free, of course, to continue uh, to want to watch it. I make no uh, pretense at trying to uh, stop any of you from doing what you choose to do. I stated my opinion of the Star Trek Discovery series in association with a conglomeration or a complex of things that were related to the Star Trek Axanar uh, issue and related to CBS's decision uh, to punitively act against the Axanar production group. And uh, I believe that uh, Star Trek Discovery is a fallout that, uh, that took place in my judgments with respect to uh, how to deal with that entire situation. That being said, uh, it is important to me that uh, a lot of the things that I see happening and have heard happening both in the so-called factual basis and so-called rumor mill basis of what is taking place behind the scenes with the Discovery program, I think it's important for us to recognize that uh, this new Star Trek Discovery program seems to have a number of different issues that are telling you once again, or telling us once again as Star Trek fans, that CBS is going to do what it is determined to do. Many people have protested uh, how the new Discovery series looks, its aesthetic appeal, 
uh, the Klingons, the uniforms, the starships design, the interior starships design as um, the bridge and the corridors. Well, there have been elements who have gone on to discuss the SJW angle that seems perhaps to be present in the new Discovery series. Uh, these things perhaps may or may not be true, but I think that there is definitely something going on here behind the scenes where uh, the creators of the new Star Trek Discovery series, whether it be the firing or perhaps if you want to use the releasing of Brian Fuller from uh, the um, headship of the new Discovery series, replacing him and virtually an entire group of people with people who are not dedicated to canon Star Trek, uh, as it is in the Prime Universe, whether it be the new aesthetic look of the Klingons, whether it be the, the new aesthetic look of the uniforms and of the bridge, etc., 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 I think it is quite clear that the makers of Star Trek Discovery have spoken, and they have spoken thusly. We are not interested in what you as Star Trek fans think overall. We are going to do what we have decided to do, and if you like it, or should you decide to accept it, you are free to come on board with us. And should you decide not to accept it, you are free to go on doing your own thing and going your own way. So be it. Uh, and I, I say so be it because those are the choices we seem to have been given as Star Trek fans with respect to the new Discovery series. Now there does appear to be a wealth of obvious talent that is going to be joining the Star Trek Discovery team. Uh, you have people, for example, uh, such as Michelle Yeoh, who many of you will recognize as a very famous uh, Chinese-American martial arts actress who has been in a number of different films across her uh, extensive career. Uh, I myself am a fan of Michelle Yeoh's acting talent uh, and her martial arts talent even more. Uh, with respect to the films that I've seen her in, I think she is uh, um, a distinguished individual who will make an excellent addition to the Star Trek Discovery team as far as her acting talent is concerned. I'm also a fan of Sonequa Martin-Green from The Walking Dead, whom many of you will recognize as Sasha from that particular uh, TV series. and. So I think that uh, Sinequa Martin-Green will also make an excellent addition to the Star Trek Discovery team as far as her acting talent is concerned. However, I will state unequivocally that I believe that these people, um, their talent is going to be used in a way that will help to bolster a TV program that, quite frankly, may or may not have the best interests of Star Trek in mind, but is going to be more so used as a vehicle for CBS to make money. Now I've also learned that the Star Trek Discovery program is supposed to take place 10 years before the original five-year mission of Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock as they advertise in their own trailer. We, uh, you know, who are who have been Star Trek fans for some time know that there is a deep and grave continuity issue going on here that has not been resolved and does not seem to uh, it, does not seem that it is going to be resolved, at least not from what we have seen so far, with respect to the creators of the new Discovery program. Ten years before Captain Kirk would put this uh, squarely within the realm of the time between Captain Robert April and Captain Christopher Pike in terms of the original five-year mission of, of James T. Kirk and, and, and Mr. Spock. And so we know that they, that therefore that the original Enterprise is already in existence. We know that, for example, the, the uniforms that were being used by Starfleet at the time, uh, from the time of Christopher Pike forward to Captain Kirk, were already in existence. We know that the technology that uh, is being used uh, in the prime timeline is already in existence. So how can this show be 10 years prior to the original mission of Captain James T. Kirk and have such a different aesthetic feel, look to it, uh, and uh, I don't know, perhaps even a different mission. I'm not entirely sure about that last point, but it does seem to me that there's some grave continuity issues going on here. And those continuity issues to me seem to have been deliberately ignored by the creators of Discovery because it seems to me, this is my opinion, it seems to me that they have been made, made a determination to create something that is a cross between the Prime and Kelvin timelines of the J.J. Abrams 
uh, iteration of Star Trek that uh, began with Star Trek 2009 and continued with Into Darkness and of course with the Beyond movie. And just on that, uh, as an aside on that, I, I, would, I have not been a fan of the J.J. Abrams universe and quite frankly I think it was a, has been a waste of time from the beginning ever since I first uh, saw uh, 2009's Star Trek with J.J. Abrams. I walked out of the theater sorely disappointed in that. Uh, I, in fact, was so disappointed that I refused to see Into Darkness in the theater. Uh, I saw it on a, uh, on a cable network and was quite frankly glad that I did not waste my money going to see it in the theater after watching it on cable. And so, based upon that, uh, I refused to see anything further that J.J. Abrams did with respect to Star Trek. But leaving that aside, back to Star Trek Discovery. It seems to me, uh, fellow Star Trek fans, that we have been uh, given uh, what could be considered a, a Hobson's choice with respect to how we are going to deal with Star Trek from here on out. We're either being told at this point that we are going to accept what we have been given and we are going to like it or at least learn to like it, or we are just going to have to go away and make way, uh, make room for the new uh, brand of Star Trek fans who will, in fact, do as they are told, quietly, without question, uh, and without fanfare, and without challenge. And this has been part of what I have tried to discuss with you with respect to the Star Trek Axanar videos that I created and why I believe ultimately the war against Axanar was not simply rooted in their uh, said so-called violation of certain rule sets that were either ignored or passively um, enforced by Paramount Pictures and CBS Studios at the time. I, in fact, do believe that this is, in fact, about making sure that you and I and others of our fellow Star Trek fans understand that from here on out, these people intend to do whatever is in the best interests of their bottom line. And from that, from here on, whether it be with Star Trek Discovery or anything new that they create, the Star Trek as we have known it, is effectively cancelled and effectively dead. Now you can get on board with that or you can go your own way. And that's what I think is happening here. And Axanar, in my opinion, was simply, how would we say, it was simply uh, an example. An example was meant to be set with respect to it. Now, there have been those... Uh, members of the Star Trek community, uh, certain actors who have basically said that they are supporting the new Star Trek Discovery program. I believe William Shatner may said in a tweet that um, he uh, was flabbergasted, I'm paraphrasing here, he was flabbergasted by how some of us are so dedicated to canon uh, and how we seem to forget that Star Trek is about great stories, not about aesthetic, aesthetics and backgrounds and sets and all this other kind of stuff. And he was basically saying in that tweet, I'm not quoting it verbatim, I am paraphrasing it. He said in that tweet that, you know, if the new Star Trek Discovery program has a great story and it continues to tell great, uh, you know, stories with respect to the human experience in the Star Trek vein, then if it doesn't do that, rather, then, you know, jump all over them, jump down their throats. But if it does, uh, you know, enjoy the show. And there have been, uh, I think it's been uh, quite magnanimous uh, of even Alec Peters in a tweet that he did to say that he is excited for Star Trek Discovery to premiere in terms of, you know, seeing uh, how it's going to handle the Star Trek universe and seeing what kind of stories it's going to tell. Uh, but that at the same time, if I'm not mistaken, he did uh, continue to say that there are, you know, continuing issues to be worked out with respect to fan films, and we should not forget that. So be it. I, I, I have to say that I appreciate both the both of these men in their magnanimous attitudes toward, especially Alec Peters, toward the new Star Trek Discovery program. And as I said before, I think that there is uh, a wealth of talent that is coming on board uh, the new Discovery program. I just named two of the several different actors who are coming on 
whom I myself personally like, uh, who are coming on this program, who will, I believe, anyway, bring a, a new and unique perspective to Star Trek, especially with respect to Sinequa Martin-Green, whom I believe this is her first real science fiction uh, TV series. But leaving that aside, I applaud Alec Peters and William Shatner for their magnanimous attitudes with respect to the new Discovery program. But that does not mitigate and it does not eliminate the problems that we have observed with this particular show and everything that has been done to try to make us believe that there is there are no issues, that there are no problems behind the scenes and that there are no power struggles behind the scenes with respect to how this show is playing out and how it is unfolding. And they seem to want us to forget or to uh, not use our own eyes, not use our own ears, not use our own good sense to observe what they are doing and to just tell us basically, you know, uh, move along here. There's no accident. There's no uh, dead bodies on the ground. There are no decapitated uh, heads rolling, uh, you know, all over the place. There's no car accident here. Just move along, move along, move along. And we know that this is not the case. And so I say to you that I believe that what is happening here is, once again, uh, an example of these executives at CBS telling us that they are going to do whatever they have chosen to do, and you little people will just sit down, shut up, and take it, and eat from the table of slop that we have chosen and decided to give you this time. Will you continue to become, be sycophants for whatever they decide to give you, making excuses and making mental leaps, of, uh, making mental leaps and, and doing all kinds of mental gymnastics in order to justify whatever it is that they want to give you this time? Or will you make a decision that you have decided that you're not going to continue supporting this kind of nonsense anymore? Now, I, you know, I can't make any of you do anything, and I don't want to make any of you doing any, do anything. But, you know, I, I think that there are too many of us who, who are willing, because we are so desperate to have Star Trek in our lives, we are willing to do anything, take anything, should I say, that they decide to throw our way. The Star Trek Discovery program looks like it is not just a, I guess you could say, some kind of transliteration of the prime timeline, it looks like it is a complete and utter reboot of the Star Trek franchise as a whole. And here again is why I say I think that this is meant to cajole those of us who have some interest in Star Trek or get us to passively accept what is going on. It's time, Star Trek fans, to make some choices, to make some decisions. And just as I said a long time ago with respect to this Star Wars The Force Awakens nonsense that I believed it fully was, if that means going ahead and creating fan fiction, fan films that are more in tune and in line with what we have an understanding of Star Trek to be, then it is time to start abandoning, in my opinion, these major studio houses and letting them know that we uh, as caretakers of these franchises, as caretakers of these ideas of science fiction, have a much better understanding of what we want to see and what we believe these things represent than they do. And if they only consider this to be nothing more than being about uh, having a cash cow at their disposal, we will starve them of that cash. Now, with respect to Star Wars, the Last Jedi trailer, let's get into that. Uh, as stated before, I was not a fan of Star Wars The Force Awakens. I thought it was filled with a number of different agendas which I did not believe were necessary in order to have a good storyline and to say something positive about Star Wars, especially for, I think it was 12 years between Reven Revenge of the Sith and the, uh, the premiere of The Force Awakens. And I think they did us a whole disservice by, number one, recreating something that had already been done in the form of concepts and ideas that were already done uh, in Star Wars A New Hope and to some degree uh, in, in, even in Empire Strikes Back and to a lesser degree Return of the Jedi. So I also made a statement at the time that I believe that there, uh, the agendas that were played out in 
Star Wars The Force Awakens were wholly unnecessary for good storytelling and I laid a lot of these things out in the videos that I did. Now, that being said, this also has given me pause with respect to seeing anything further with respect to this new uh, incarnation of Star Wars. I am not excited to see The Last Jedi. I probably will see it at some point, but I'm not going to be some person who's going to be rushing out to the theater to see it because of what I saw with The Force Awakens. By contrast and comparison, I did enjoy Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, I saw that uh, more than once in the theater, and I was happy to do so. And I applauded Disney for what they did with respect to Rogue One. However, with respect to The Last Jedi, after seeing the abysmal piece of flotsam that they produced with that movie, I cannot say that it will please me to go see The Last Jedi. Now, I understand that there are some things that Ryan Johnson wrote the script for this movie and that he also directed it, of course. Uh, and so that might change things with respect to, you know, not seeing Jar Jar Abrams again behind the helm of this movie. Um, hopefully that will change some things. Um, but uh, I am going to be more circumspect with respect to The Last Jedi than I was with The Force Awakens. I hope that the, Force, that the Last Jedi will be uh, a much better movie, but I'm going to be more cautious and reserved this time. Uh, the trailer itself did look interesting. It did what a trailer, a teaser trailer should do. It gave, you know, uh, a little bit of insight into the movie without giving too much away, and I think that that was good. And I think that, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, the, the paths that have been chosen here with respect to, you know, how we're going to treat, how we're going to treat the character of Luke Skywalker, um, maybe that will change this time. Um, uh, unfortunately, with the death of Carrie Fisher uh, last year in December, we are now not going to have the uh, anticipated reunion between him, that is, between Mark Hamill's character, Luke Skywalker, and her character Princess Leia, now General Leia Organa, uh, unless they have somehow decided to do that with CGI or maybe they did something with the script that we don't know about, but with the unfortunate death of Carrie Fisher, that now is over. And of course with the unfortunate uh, killing off of the character of Han Solo in The Force Awakens, another stupid move in my opinion in that movie. Uh, we will never see those three characters on screen again together uh, as they should have been seen in The Force Awakens. So that's basically what I have to say about those three, those three uh, new science fiction concepts that are coming out. And out of the three of them, the one that I'm most excited about, I am in fact somewhat sorry to say, is The Orville. And I'm not sorry to say that because I think the Orville is, is going to be garbage. To the contrary, I think it's going to be quite good. But I'm sorry to say that because as a Star Trek fan, number one, and somewhat of a Star Wars fan, number two, what we have seen over the last several years has not inspired my loyalty. And it has not inspired my respect. And I think that it is time for other Star Wars and Star Trek fans to begin speaking up and speaking out to the powers that be letting them know that if all you want out of us is money then all you're going to get out of us is nothing and you're going to lose what respect you have had over these last 40 and 50 years uh, with respect to these two different franchises because people will begin walking away from what you have done if you continue to show us the kind of contempt that I personally believe both of these franchises have begun to start showing over the last several years. And with respect to Star Trek, I think that that has persisted for quite some time. That's all I've got to say for now. This has been another episode of Continuum Meditations Discusses. I'll be happy to read your comments, whether you agree or don't agree. So anyway, this has been another episode of Continuum Meditations Discusses. Until next time, bye for now.